is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Time right now is 427 here on our Friday. We finally made it through your work week. Thanks for joining us on Good Morning Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey. And I'm Meredith Barrick. We want to begin with the latest coronavirus numbers. There they are on your screen. More than 3,000 total positive cases here in the Hoosier State. 78 total deaths. More than 1,300 cases here in Marion County with 24 deaths. And more than 16,200 people tested so far. And because these numbers aren't stopping anytime soon. Officials have decided to close schools for the rest of the school year. That's right. So Governor Holcomb announcing yesterday during that press conference with the superintendent of public instruction that schools K through 12 would not be going back to school the rest of the school year. We knew that they were going to be home at least through May 1st, but that was really a best case scenario. They're looking more at the numbers and when they expect this to sort of peak and they think that the safety of students and staff is important, so they do not want them to come back to school for the May month to finish out the school year. They will be finishing that out using e-learning from home. And that's really because, you know, schools can just be a pool of germs. You're getting people from all different places. So right now we're trying to social distance and they don't want to ruin that by bringing everyone back into these schools together. So a lot of students, a lot of parents and teachers really sad to hear this news that they won't be able to go back this school year. And so we will be keeping you updated on their stories. That also means spring sports are canceled for the remainder of the year. We have also been introducing you to a number of people who are on the front lines fighting this illness that has taken so many lives out there. And our Alyssa Donovan is going to introduce you to this Indiana native who is studying COVID-19 and is really taking a deeper look at what this disease is. And so we'll talk to him about what he does. It's kind of like helping the public officials make these models that we've been using to see if social distancing is working. So that should be an interesting story coming up. And again, a person with indie ties helping this cause. All right, all that coronavirus Jabba Jenna, and we got to get to some good news as we get to your weekend, and that is when we bring in Todd Clausen. Yeah, you know, yesterday it was beautiful with all that sunshine and the temperatures in the 60s. Today we're starting off even warmer than we did yesterday, and that's going to result in high temperatures being a little bit warmer later on this afternoon. A live view from downtown off to the west there in the center of your screen, and visibility not an issue here this morning. And skies are partly cloudy. 50 degrees right now in Indy 46 in Zionsville, a little cooler to the north, Logansport. Good morning to you. You are at 46 degrees. We're going up to 65 this afternoon. It's a great day with partly cloudy skies. And that 65 puts us six degrees above normal. So it'll be another day to get out there and enjoy. There are some showers in the forecast as we enter the weekend. We'll talk about that and a whole lot more coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. in Indiana are now closed for the rest of the semester because of COVID-19. What that means for high school seniors as they look to finish their final year. Unemployment across the country is at an all-time high. What the federal government and local communities are doing to help small businesses keep their employees on the payroll. And hundreds of Hoosiers got together to show support for our local health care workers. The social distancing display aiming to uplift those on the front lines. Thanks for joining us here at 4.30 on your Friday morning. I'm Meredith Barrick. And I'm Lauren Casey. Todd Klassen is standing by with a look at our forecast for our Friday. Todd, what can we expect out there right now? You know, it's nice and quiet right now. Temperature's not bad as you get going on this Friday morning. We're in the 40s and 50s. This compared to yesterday when some of you dipped down below freezing in northern locations. So we're a full almost 18, 20 degrees warmer in spots than it was 24 hours ago. It is 50 right now in Bloomington, Martinsville, as well as Indianapolis. 43 as you work your way from Muncie to the north up towards the Peru area. 47 is the current temperature in Greencastle. Now, when you look at this, I know what you're thinking. Oh no, here comes some rain. This is not reaching the ground. Uh, more, most of this is just kind of some feedback from the radar. So it's going to be a quiet morning. There could be a sprinkle way across northern portions of central Indiana, but that is just about it. But we'll kind of just be in and out of the clouds throughout the course of uh, the day today. So it won't be that completely blue sky like we had yesterday. There's a little more in the way of cloud cover, uh, but still we'll just call it partly cloudy and overall a great day. We're at 60 degrees already by the time we get to the 
the noon hour. And as we progress into the afternoon, we're looking at high temperatures today in the mid 60s. Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Here is a look right now at traffic as you're heading out the door. I-70 at Rural Street and Keystone Avenue on the near east side. Traffic here is pretty quiet this morning and traveling up to speed. We will continue to keep you updated if there are any major crashes or delays for your commute. It's going to take a collective effort to save lives and schools must do their part. State Superintendent of Public Instruction Dr. Jennifer McCormick announcing all K through 12 schools will be closed for the remainder of the school year. The state making more changes as the number of Hoosiers infected with COVID-19 continues to grow. Indiana now has more than 3,000 confirmed cases of the disease. 78 people have died. In Marion County alone, 1,300 cases have been reported, including 24 deaths. So far, the state says more than 16,000 people have been tested. Well, school buildings are now required to remain closed for the rest of the school year because of that outbreak and that means that students will have to continue doing their school work through that remote learning. For high school seniors, the state is making changes to make sure their graduation will not be delayed. For seniors, for the class of 2020, you will be required to have earned your credits and for any course that you are enrolled in will count toward that. So if you have earned your credits up to semester seven or in middle school and are enrolled in courses that will get you across that stage, you will be recognized as a 2020 graduate at the conclusion of your calendar or your instructional year. Schools must also complete a minimum of 160 total instruction days or at least 20 more days of remote learning from April 2nd to the end of the school year. Following that announcement, the Indiana High School Athletic Association said it is also canceling spring sports. That includes baseball, softball, golf, tennis, and track. The IHSAA says it supports the state's decision to close schools and urges residents to follow safety guidelines. 6.6 .6 million Americans filed for unemployment benefits last week, doubling the record high set just a week ago. Indiana's numbers are also climbing as the economy continues to be devastated by the coronavirus outbreak. More than 146,000 Hoosiers filed unemployment claims last week. The Department of Workforce Development says it is now making changes to handle the surge of applications. They are hiring 77 new state employees and have opened up a new system where Hoosiers can file over the phone or online. The federal government also added a new category of workers who can apply for benefits. They include contractors, freelancers, and gig economy workers like Uber and Lyft drivers. Today, a new federal lending program for small businesses that was part of that massive stimulus bill is supposed to begin. But some banks who are part of the $350 billion program aren't sure if they're ready yet. The Paycheck Protection Program is supposed to help small businesses survive the pandemic by offering loans to help pay with payroll and other expenses. But the Trump administration only finalized rules for the program two days ago. So some banks will be lending the money, they said that they're still going over the rules and they may not be able to take the applications from small businesses just yet. And leaders in Hamilton County are also working to help small businesses in their community. The city of Noblesville is offering them money through a grant program. Businesses can apply for aid up to $10,000. That money will come from the city's rainy day fund. For local owners like Jason Manship of Moonshot Games, it would be a big step towards helping businesses like his survive. Such a cool concept. I mean, to, to see the city sand with the people that, you know, are there with it. I mean, we're there every single day. Well, so far, 70 businesses have already applied. A committee will then decide where the money goes. The deadline to apply is by the end of the day today. We do have a link to do that on our website, theindychannel.com. COVID-19 is having an impact on the way people drink in central Indiana, and it's especially tough on those in recovery. Liquor stores are still open, yet people are isolated and stressed. Alex has been in recovery for 20 years. Now, we're not showing you his face because he is part of Alcoholics Anonymous. He says now is a rough time for recovering alcoholics because almost all AA meetings have been moved to virtual meetings rather than in person. There's stress. It's a lot of people, especially uh, newer folks in recovery, struggle when they're isolated. And uh, this is what is happening right now everywhere. 
Experts say if you're finding you need alcohol to get through the day, you could have a problem. Another red flag is if friends or family are telling you to cut back. The first step is to talk to someone like a health care provider, go to an AA meeting, or call a hotline. Like we mentioned, AA meetings are still happening virtually all over central Indiana, and we've included some links on how to find one in this story on the RTV6 app. An Indianapolis agency, nonprofit group, and beloved sports franchise are now working together to help some of our most most vulnerable neighbors. The Office of Public Health and Safety at Second Helpings are partnering to provide meals for people experiencing homelessness. The food is being stored in the Pacers refrigeration facilities. Thousands of meals will be provided to those living in the unsheltered camps over the next few weeks. Organizers say this service is essential during the COVID-19 crisis because many meal sites have been required to close under social distancing guidelines. On the west side of Indianapolis, a huge display of support for those who are fighting coronavirus on the front lines. Hundreds of people kept a safe distance in their cars and turned out for a prayer and worship night in support of healthcare workers and patients at IU Health West. We're excited to uplift the doctors and the nurses, the hospital staff, the patients. We just want to let them know that the community is there and we support and we love them and that we're praying for them and that we're lifting them up. Just knowing that um, this many people in the community are thinking about us and praying for us and sitting outside the hospital thinking about us is really something pretty incredible for our team to think about. Supporters parked in the hospital's parking lot but watched live on Facebook together and they tuned into one radio station to hear the same music. Very cool. Very cool there. Well, with over 1 million cases reported across the globe, new hotspots are emerging every day. The locations where health officials expect that surge to happen next. And with businesses and gyms closed, many are getting frustrated with their continued membership fees, how different companies are handling the pandemic, and what you need to do to cancel that account. Todd. And we have a nice little wedge of mild air that's in place here for the day today. Sitting at 50 degrees right now in Indianapolis. Not bad at all. We're heading into the mid-60s later on this afternoon. But that cooler air off to the west, we'll let you know what kind of impact that has on the weekend forecast coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues. The time now is 438. Stay with us. We're back in just a few minutes. Welcome back. It is 441. Here's a live look at traffic over on the west side, I-465 and I-74. Easy traffic here is moving along up to speed this morning. No major issues to slow you down. There are now 1 million cases of COVID-19 worldwide. The United States, Italy, and Spain are the three most affected nations. More than 53,000 have died globally from the virus. And according to Johns Hopkins University, more than 200,000 have recovered. The United States is still bracing for an increase in coronavirus cases, and it, as each day passes, more hotspots are emerging. ABC's Kimberly Brooks has the details. New York is no doubt the epicenter of COVID-19 in the U.S., but as each day passes, a new reality, more hotspots emerging. What changes the curve is a new Detroit, a new Chicago, a new New Orleans, a new Colorado. We're watching very carefully because we see that you can go from this to this very quickly. Why the spikes? It comes down to who was still moving around in recent days. This New York Times map shows the country color-coded by who was allowed to travel just last week. Those gray areas are places where stay-at-home orders were already in place. But those areas of red? Business as usual, from state officials late to restrict travel. Georgia finally issued its stay-at-home order Wednesday. The governor making this shocking statement yesterday. Well, we've been telling people from directives from the CDC for weeks now that if you start feeling bad, stay home. Uh, those individuals could have been infecting people before they ever felt bad. Well, we didn't know that until the last 24 hours. But the CDC warned about that risk months ago. One rural area of Georgia is erupting with cases. It just shows you, it, you know, you're not safe in rural America, small urban. This isn't just for the big cities. Uh, it's for all of the United States. And in Louisiana, this sobering chart showing cases soaring to nearly 10,000, a 42% jump in one day. In Volusia County, Florida, northeast of Orlando, beaches were still open until last night. Florida has reported a 27% increase in its death toll in one day. 
In growing concern in Colorado, the governor writing a letter to Vice President Pence saying the crisis is far worse than he imagined and saying Colorado's death rate is rising faster than any other state. Well, a Seattle area nursing home where some of the first US coronavirus case deaths rather happen is now facing a big fine. Federal authorities are proposing that the Life of Care Center pay $611,000 for their health violations. Last month, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services inspected the facility and found things that put residents in serious danger. At least 40 people died of the COVID-19 in that home. CMS says the fine could be adjusted based on how Life of Care Life of Care handles its remaining issues. Last year, the home was fined $67,000 over infection control deficiencies. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration is releasing results about if coronavirus can spread through food. The agency says there was no evidence that COVID-19 is spreading through food or food packaging. Officials say even if a person working at a food facility tested positive for the virus, they do not anticipate a massive recall. The FDA says there is also not a widespread food shortage shortage despite some empty grocery store shelves. They are urging people to just buy a week or two worth of groceries at a time. Here at quarter to five, we hope you maybe have some hamburger in the <laughs> freezer because tonight will be a good night to uh, grill out, Todd. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Today will be even a little bit warmer than it was yesterday and skies will be partly cloudy and it'll be dry. So yeah, by all means, fire up the grill with some hamburgers, hot dogs, or uh, whatever you want to put on there. You'll be in great shape uh, during the day today. All right, so as we go throughout the day today, we're already warmer than we were 24 hours ago. So when you look at this 24 hour temperature change map, it's always better when you see yellows and oranges compared uh, to the darker blues, which is the colder air. So we're running eight to 15 degrees warmer uh, than we were at this point yesterday. And I point that out because with the warmer start will come a little bit of a warmer finish for us uh, later on today. 50 degrees, that's the current temperature at the airport in Indianapolis, just a light wind out of the east southeast currently at five miles per hour and temperatures differ from about 50 in Bloomington a little cooler to the east in Richmond but Richmond uh, wherever that thermometer is always running a little bit cooler I believe 45 in Tipton 43 in Peru and 46 the current temperature in Greencastle when you look at radar it looks like there's a lot of rain out there this is not reaching the ground uh, more feedback than anything we do have some clouds out there and some of these darker shades of green probably reaching the ground with a little bit of rain but the bulk of that is going to pass to the north, uh, but it may clip a few locations here with a brief sprinkle this morning up towards uh, Monticello, Delphi, Flora, and into the Logansport area. But essentially, this will kind of go through uneventful for most of us here across the area. It's a great Friday for us with just a little bit more in the way of cloud cover this morning. Then we'll thin that out. Partly cloudy skies this afternoon. Temperatures, though, will be in the 60s already by the noon hour, 63 by 2 p.m. And then plenty of sunshine with temperatures in the low to mid 60s. Later on today, this evening, if you have plans, as Meredith mentioned, if you want to grill out, temperatures in the 60s, eventually falling into the 50s, dry conditions, partly cloudy skies, sunset this evening, that is at 812. Now, there are some showers in the forecast tomorrow. Most of them are going to be during the afternoon hours, and they're all going to be very light. So if you do have plans, maybe heading to a state park or uh, walk around the neighborhood, just know that there will be a little band of light rain that will come into the area. Yeah, mid morning off to the west and then it was it works its way east it really just falls apart there's no moisture source to keep this thing really going such as the Gulf of Mexico so with the exception of a few hit or miss showers on Saturday it's not a bad day and most of the day is honestly going to be dry for you it's just a little bit cooler as that front comes through we're down into the low 60s but we're back up into the 70s starting on Monday Tuesday and Wednesday stray shower on Sunday and Monday nothing really to worry about a little better chances of some showers and thunderstorms. Lauren, as we work our way to Tuesday and Wednesday. All right, Todd, thanks so much. We are keeping a close eye on your roads. If you're heading out to work this Friday, here's a live look over on the west side at I-465 near the Sam Jones Expressway. You can see some headlights there moving across your screen. Traffic is traveling up to speed. Right now, no crashes to report around the metro area. With millions out of work and a new month of bills due, you might be annoyed with automatic payments coming from your bank account. For some memberships, like gyms, they've been a source of frustration frustration for many. Some chains like LA Fitness and Planet Fitness say they've suspended their billing until their facilities can reopen. YMCA's, however, are asking members to turn their membership fees into donations. It's a health club that wants to maintain 
uh, its customers after this emergency is done um, should be doing all it can to try and, and make sure that uh, it's part of the solution to consumers' problems here, not part of the problem. If you want to cancel, the Nat National Consumer League recommends you get in touch with your gym. They also recommend documenting your attempts to get in touch with them and how they respond. If you still cannot get in touch with anyone, contact State Consumer Protection. Lowe's is helping its employees during the outbreak with a pay raise. The home improvement chain says workers will see a $2 an hour pay increase. The increase is temporary just for the month of April. It applies to all of the company's full-time, part-time, and seasonal hourly workers who are employed at Lowe's stores and fulfillment centers. The company CEO it says it's a thank you to workers who are working during this pandemic. All employees are provided masks and gloves. Lowe's has also stopped the sales of N95 masks. Instead, they're being donated to hospitals. Facebook Messenger is taking on Zoom and FaceTime by launching a new desktop app for, app for PCs and Macs. Facebook says it hopes the app will make it easier for people to stay in touch with friends and loved ones during the coronavirus crisis. Social media Media company says the move comes after a surge in audio and video calls as people stay at home to practice social distancing. Over the past month, Facebook says it saw more than a 100% increase in people using their desktop browser for calling on Messenger. The desktop app offers free and unlimited group video calls. Pop icon Taylor Swift was quick to help out a fan when she learned that the college student was in financial trouble because of the coronavirus pandemic. 20-year-old Jessica Busselwitz is a sophomore at Smith College and lost both of her jobs that allowed allowed to her to pay for her tuition. She wrote about her struggles on her Taylor Swift Tumblr page. Not long after, she saw that the singer herself dropped $3,000 into her account. I was sitting on the couch, it was 6.20 p.m. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm sitting on the couch and the notification pops up and I literally like dropped my phone. My mom probably thought I was hurt or something. Swift also left a personal message. She says she will use some of the money to pay for household bills and internet so she can continue her online classes. Duncan is hoping sweetness can help people during these trying times. Every Friday in April, the company says it's giving free donuts to members of its rewards program if they purchase a drink. The promotion was intended to run only through March, but Duncan has extended it through April to bring a little extra joy at the end of each week. Well, a man in Florida is hoping to bring some laughs during the coronavirus outbreak with a large roll of toilet paper. After the break, a look at the giant front lawn decoration. And scientists across the globe are doing what they can to fight the coronavirus. New at 5, we talked to an Indianapolis native who is also studying the new disease. It's 451. We'll be right back. At SteelDealers.com. All right, welcome back to Good Morning Indiana. We are keeping a close eye on the roads. A little bit of construction for you near Meridian Street on the north side. This is a view near White River. It looks like traffic is moving along up to speed. No delays on the north side. A homeowner in Florida is having some fun with the nation's rush on toilet paper by hanging a giant roll in his front yard. Donald Ryan displayed the TP between two palm trees at his Fort Myers home. He owns a craft business called Who Would Wonder and also used the decoration to advertise. Ryan says he thinks the whole toilet paper phenomena is hilarious and thought it would make some people smile during these tough times. Of course, it's the most important thing. You got to laugh or you're going to just drive yourself crazy. This is not the first time Ryan has been recognized for his unique decorations. He is known for putting Christmas lights and Halloween decorations suspended between the trees every year. That is pretty <laughs> funny. I do wonder where he got all that paper from, <laughs> right? <laughs> Oh my. And what he's going to do with it when it's all over. Right? That's a big roll. All right, Todd, let's roll into the forecast for our weekend. You know, and it's, it's not a bad forecast. As you look at your seven day, you'll see numerous days where I have some rain icons in there. Just know that no day is a complete washout today. No threat of rain, 65. A mixture of sun and clouds. Some spotty showers tomorrow. They're light. It's only a brief window that we have them in the forecast. So most of Saturday's dry. It's just a little cooler at 62. But then into the 70s, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We'll go into detail about your seven day planning forecast when good morning. Indiana continues. The time now is 4.57. We're back in just a few minutes.